We're gonna do a how to replace or install electric brakes and the drums on your trailer axles. Now this applies from 3,500 pound up to 8,000 pound trailer axles with electric brakes. These in particular are 7,000 pound axles. The 5,200, 7,000 and 8,000 pound axles all have the same spindle. The 5,200, 7,000 use the same size brakes. The 8,000 uses the bigger brakes and your 3,500 pound axles have smaller brakes and spindles, but this applies to all of them. It's all the same general stuff. This arm goes in the front. So this is the left side. This is the driver's side of the trailer. And this arm will be facing that way. That's because when it's turning this way, the hub, it gets pulled this, it get, this magnet energizes and it gets pulled back, which pushes out the brake drum. And if you haven't hit it in reverse, it kind of works the other way, but not as well. So the arm that the electromagnet is attached to always has to be facing forward. Now, if you're considering just buying new brake shoes for one of these, a lot of the time it's honestly just better just to get the whole backing plate and everything and replace that, then mess with the shoes. It's not that complicated. A lot of time the whole thing is kind of rusty. So you're all better off just getting the whole backing plate. They're pretty cheap these days. Slide it on there just like that. I was running these axles for a long time without brakes, just idler hubs. So I didn't have any nuts to hold on the brake assembly here. So these are actually 3 8 24 fine thread. A lot of time if you buy an axle, you'll have them. If you need to replace them on a 7,000 pound or even the, the 5,200 pound axles, usually it's a 3 8 24, just so you know. Now sometimes they'll give you like a flange nut with like a teeth on the back, whatever they call that. I am a fan of the Loctite. Honestly, red Loctite, a lot of people will call it permanent. It's really not permanent in my experience. It always comes off, but it will hold it, hold these on there and keep it from, keep your nuts from unwanted, unwantedly coming off, so. It's impact does the trick, but I just want to check them by hand too. Before I go any further, I'm going to take my brake drum and I'm going to try to slide it over these shoes. Make sure it goes on because sometimes they're in shipping or they might not be set right. The shoes can open up and the adjuster will be too big to actually even set the drum on. So I just want to double check that before you go any further because you might have to mess with the adjuster down here. Take some grease, I can use this red grease, usually called high temperature grease. Work it in, then you wanna squish it in between on the sides like this right here. You know, get it all over, roll it around. Now this back bearing on here will get grease when you, if you shoot some in here, cause this is an easy lube axles like most of these newer ones. Shoot some grease in the end. It'll, the back bearing will get grease, this big one. The front one gets kind of screwed. It's a littler one, it doesn't see as much load but it ends up getting the nasty grease that's pushed out and uh, it's not directly lubricated. So if anything, pay a little bit more attention to that small one. These bearings really don't last like they once did in my opinion. I don't think they're made quite as good. Man, you see some old bearings f from the 90s or something with 400,000 miles in a rear end of a truck and the races, the bearings look like brand new. So. That ain't really the case anymore. All this stuff you're getting. Now this part right here is real important. You wanna take your big bearing that goes in the back and put it in the backside before you put the seal on. Now, <laughs> this will get screwed up real easy. You'll put the seal in and forget to put the bearing in to realize you have to take the seal back out to get this bearing in. And then you get your seal on. I do own a set of seal drivers. I'm assuming a lot of people watching this don't. A dead blow hammer would be nice, but also just a BFH will work too. Just some light taps around the outside. We'll get this seal set right in there. All right, let's pop the small bearing in the front. Once you got that outer bearing in there, this part might vary a little bit, uh, but these newer axles have this type of shim or this washer that goes on the end. It's shaped like a D, so it can only go one way. It won't spin on you. Then there's this nut. It's inch and a half if you wanna get a socket for it or you have a comically large wrench like this. So what you want to do is tighten this nut up pretty good. Don't crank on it, but definitely get it nice and snug. At first, 
to make sure everything is pressed on as far as it can go on this spindle. Now you certainly aren't gonna wanna leave it that tight because now your bearings are basically seized up. This will wear out your bearings really, really fast. If you had to choose between too tight and too loose, you'd wanna go too loose. So after you crank this nut real tight to make sure everything's pressed on that spindle, go ahead and loosen it up all the way because you're gonna wanna air on the side of too loose, not too tight on any type of bearing like this. Once you loosen it up, take it by hand and just get it as snug as you can by hand. That's really it. Honestly, if you're gonna pick too tight or too loose, pick too loose. Now this style here of axle, this is a newer style axle, it has these little clips. Um, some older style axles will have just a cotter pin. You'll have a castle nut and a cotter pin. That's fine too. You can usually find a good tooth to land that on. This style here has a directional, again, it's D-shaped because the end of the spindle is D-shaped. And hmm, it's very interesting because look, this will not, oh, actually it goes right there. Yep, perfect. Exactly where I landed it at. And it's hanging up on that brake pad a little bit. Those gotta, they gotta wear in. And the, these are, uh, this is all off-brand stuff here, so it's not, it is not perfect. It's, they're never perfect. They're a little, little wonky. They're not genuine Dexter parts. If you get genuine Dexter parts, I highly recommend it, but it also is very expensive. But you can feel that it's not, it is not too tight at all right there. And also, there's no play in it. Now you can have a little bit of play, a tiny bit. It's not gonna hurt anything. But again, if you just crank it tight, make sure it's on there, loosen it up, tighten it by hand, call it good. That's literally all you gotta do. Now's a really good time to get a grease gun. Pump a little extra grease if you got an easy lube fitting like this on your axle. Pump a little extra grease in there and go ahead and pump some grease in it at least every 5,000 miles. Um, again, these bearings on the outer side here don't get any grease. It all goes right to that back one so it would not hurt periodically to pull this apart and pull that end bearing out check it out clean it up maybe regrease it because they get they all they all get nasty and it all gets pushed out to that outer one so if you're real up on your maintenance that's definitely something to look out for only thing left to do here is pound this cap on there it is that's that's more like it yep hey Pro tip right there, if it's real cold out like it is right now, and you're having a real hard time getting these dust caps on, heat that thing up a little bit, it'll go right in.